Hey, so it turns out you get what you pay for. I've been playing a lot with high definition component video in the analog domain. I've been looking for devices to convert from digital to analog, say from HDMI to component. And so I went to Amazon and there's hundreds of devices that are all like this one. There's hundreds that are in this shape with different logos on it. There's others with different shapes. They're all sort of in the same price range around 30 bucks or some of them are priced up to like 150 bucks. And they're all kind of junky. Um, I bought a few of them, returned a few of them. I've opened them up. They all have the same bits inside, some random chip that I can only find the, uh, the data sheet for in Chinese that does the conversion. And the quality is not great. And I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to find some, some better gear? I ended up finding this guy here, which is an SDI to analog conversion. SDI is Serial Digital Interface. It's a pro uh, digital video format. And by searching for SDI to analog, I found this pro gear. Now, obviously, there's a price difference. This is about five times more expensive than this guy. Uh, but you get what you pay for. So um, I've got a test rig set up here. I'm outputting this test pattern from my computer. This is what you see in component coming out of the Blackmagic SDI converter. It looks great. We'll take a look on the scope and then we'll compare it side to side to the cheap unit and uh, we'll see where it falls short. Let's dive in and have a look. Start off with a quick walkthrough of the setup. Uh, as I said, I'm using the SDI to analog converter. But to get SDI, which most computers won't have unless you've got a professional setup, you need an HDMI to SDI converter. This is actually a Chinese knockoff of this Blackmagic brand. Um, I figured I could cheap out on this a little bit because it operates completely in a digital domain. It doesn't do any rescaling. It's just digital in, digital out. And it turns out that guy works fine. So that's sticking SDI out of here coming into this guy, then spits out component there, and you see it on the screen. You're not gonna be able to see any artifacts via a camera, uh, but the things to be looking for when you're doing these sort of tests is this high bandwidth region here, how clean do those lines look? On these sharp edges, do you get any ringing or artifacts? And this just looks pretty much perfect. So there's not much to look at there. Um, but when we uh, compare the other guy, uh, you'll see some differences and we'll zoom in on the scope. Okay, we're now set up with the cheap guy. Um, it works, you've got an image on the screen, um, but it's not great. Uh, the lines here are getting blurry. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on the camera, uh, but around each of these white lines is a black border on each side um, because the, the just the analog signal path in here is not very good. Um, yeah, it's not great. This thing does do rescaling, so we're actually putting out 1080p by 24, which you can see here in this sort of ubiquitous Chinese device uh, typeface. And it's actually rescaling it to here at 60p, uh, at 1080, here it's 480 lines. And what we were looking at before that was 720. Uh, this is 1080p at 50. Uh, changing the frame rate is not a huge deal for, for just displaying it, but given that I'm going into an analog video synth that I've built, um, I really want the frame rate to stay the same because that affects sort of my filter design and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's annoying that it does that. But let's dive into the scope because I'm not sure how well you're going to be seeing these artifacts on the screen. So I'm just going to take the Luma and Sync signal. That's going to have the most sort of important information. And we'll just look at that on the scope. All right, so here we have the luminance signal. Uh, let's uh, trigger off the sync pulse, there we go. Let's zoom in and just get one line. So here we are looking at one of those uh, lines that has the high frequency sort of black and white bars. Uh, you can see the checker pattern along here uh, and here are the increasing sort of bars. And the signal's not looking great. If we uh, zoom in, um, those edges are really rounded over. Um, indicating that there's probably some stray capacitance or inductance or something. Um, see if we can find, yeah. These are then the white lines of the grid and doing, 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 you get this ringing noise that's going between gray and white. That should be a crisp pulse there. The rise time here is not um, sharp and it's, it's not fast. So yeah, here's the sync pulse that starts each line, it should be a nice tight square wave. Now, that's fine that it's not, it's gonna work, but that just gives you an indication of the fact that it's not reproducing a nice sharp edge, not 
producing the nice high bandwidth that you need for HD video. Let's take a look by comparison of that the um, other one. Okay, here I found a similar line on the output of the Black Magic, and I've got to say the cheap device wasn't doing itself any favors by upscaling the 24 frames a second to 50 frames a second. It just was you know, pushing up even harder bandwidth issues. Uh, but here the signal is super clean. Um, you'll remember that, I mean, look how repeatable they are. Now, the bandwidth limit on this scope is 70 megahertz, and that's not really enough to, to capture nice square waves for like one pixel on, one pixel off down here, but they just look like beautiful sine waves, um, which is what you should get as you get towards the Nyquist limit of a scope like this. Um, but these edges here are fast. The white lines in the gray fields, boop, white on, white off. There's no ringing. Um, again, you don't have perfect edges, but I think it's more a limitation of the scope than the device. And the sync pulse, if we go over here, that's pretty damn crisp. Um, I have to zoom out, zoom in a lot to get those round edges. Um, I'm going to capture both of these and uh, we'll look at them side by side. So here we can have a close look at the two lines uh, side by side. On the bottom here, no surprise, you have the black magic. On the top, you have the cheap guy. Just looking at the sync pulse, you can see this is all rounded over, whereas this is nice and crisp. I've compensated for the difference in frame rate, so these should be sort of pixel by pixel identical. Uh, on the test image, you could see uh, black lines on either side of the white lines of the, the graticule in the test pattern. That's caused by the ringing in the circuit from this cheap guy where it shoots down into black before shooting up into white and it just rings around there. Compared to the black magic uh, expensive guy, nice crisp white lines. Um, positive pulse, a little bit of undershoot, and a little bit of trailing off, uh, but that's sort of getting to the limitations of the resolutions of my scope. Um, on the topic of the limitation of the resolution of my scope, you can see these gray patterns. These are the fine stripes that get finer and finer. They're sort of decreasing in amplitude here as we're running into the bandwidth limit of the uh, scope. But comparing it to the one from the cheap guy, you can see the amount of ringing that's happening on these sharp edges is overwhelming it and it looks like it's getting brighter, where it should be all same consistency. Um, so you can see pretty clearly uh, uh, <laughs> these are not identical signals. This is a much better representation of the test pattern. This is pretty janky. I think a good way to end the video would be with a teardown, starting off with a cheap guy. There's really not much going on here. We have uh, a couple of components of interest. Back here, we have uh, where the HDMI input comes into. We have an HDI, HDMI decoder. Here we have uh, one chip does everything, HDMI to analog output. You can see the three analog traces going to these guys. They are not distance matched. I'm sure they're not uh, deeply impedance matched or anything like that. Um, they're just uh, going out to these guys. And back here we have a Cortex M0 that provides probably the on-screen display and the mode switching uh, as you change the um, resolution of the output. Really not a lot going on here. It's a four-layer board. Pretty simple. You get what you pay for. On the other hand, this is what you get in the back Black Magic board. Um, dominated here by uh, Xilinx Spartan FPGA, 256 megabytes um, of RAM that's acting probably as a frame buffer. You'll see an unpopulated chip area here. I believe they also sell a 4K version of this. I don't believe it actually puts 4K analog out. I don't think that's quite possible. Um, but I think it allows you to do, uh, it'll do the conversion. Um, what else do we have? I saw a Cirrus Logic chip here that's doing the audio uh, encoding uh, for the audio output. Then you have a three channel 10-bit uh, DAC, uh, high speed uh, digital to analog converter. Uh, I doubt the other guy's doing 10 bits uh, per each of these guys. It's probably just doing eight bits or, or maybe even worse. Um, but yeah, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, over here, I think there is a USB uh, uh, receiver. 
Uh, this guy has a USB port, I believe on the box it said it can be reprogrammed. So I think the FPGA can be reprogrammed to deal with other custom and weird formats and it's future proofed. It's a bunch of dip switches over here for, for setting different modes. Anyway, you're getting a lot more um, in this guy and they've obviously put a lot more care and thought into the traces, the layout, and making sure that these analog outs um, are really as good as they can possibly be. So I'm happy with this guy. I'm gonna put the lid on before the magic smoke comes out. Uh, but that's my quick review of these two guys. My recommendation is buy this one if you care about video signal, if you're just looking to play some games on a TV or whatever. Um, yeah, this, this is fine. No disrespect to gamers. Um, yeah, not sure why I said that. Anyway, I like this guy. Where are you? There you are. See ya.